Why do I love vinyl? What a great question. It's just a uh, contrast from what's out there today. Because it makes me lots of money. Why do I love vinyl? It's what I grew up with. I'm kind of used to it. Doesn't mean that I'm not used to today's audio environment and so on, but it was really attractive. I like vinyl because it's a spiral scratch. One continuous line that starts on the outside and runs all the way to the center with nothing but nuggets of glorious sound. Spinning records, listening to them, the magic of dropping a needle down on a piece of vinyl just really spoke to me, I guess, and I really enjoyed it and was mesmerized by it and never stopped. I think the first record I actually collected was in the mid-60s. It was the theme to a TV show called Hawaii Five-O. I wouldn't, I don't know if there's any one certain record that I ever purchased that that really gave me the collect collecting bug. Probably a Zeppelin album or Pink Floyd. The Sex Pistols, never mind the Bollocks, or The Clash, um, London Calling, and even some local stuff like Teenage Head and The Forgotten Rebels. Some of the stuff that really I really like a lot is a lot of the, the local stuff from back in my day. Like when I was going out, partying up, had hair down to here and stuff like that, it was, you know, 63 Monroe, Forgotten Rebels. These bands are the creme de la creme, I must say. There's a place for every kind of music. You're not gonna whip it out sitting in church or some shit, but you know what I mean? From that point on, I just kept on collecting record after record. All genres, all genres. Uh, rock, classical, my parents listened to a ton of classical. Beethoven, to thrash, to a little bit of country, a little bit of everything. I, I think I got onto records because I was looking at the artwork on them. The artwork is wild. Like, I love the artwork. I hate to say it, but the, the more violent it was, the darker it was, the more interesting it, it was. It's, with, with punk rock records, I mean, there's a lot of, I guess, sarcasm, and you had like images of, of Ronald Reagan taking a bullet in the head, or he had the, the famous Misfits bullet seven inch, and you've got uh, John F. K. taking a bullet to the head. Uh, some pretty graphic, violent images that were pretty much, you know, they're, they're giving out a very political message, but at the same time, it was just like a bit of gore, which, you know, kind of teenage, teenage boys like that kind of stuff, right? A lot of people will say the vinyl sounds better. A lot of people will say the CD sounds better. No, CDs do not sound better than vinyl. No, that's no. You have to play back a CD on a really high-end system to get the optimal sound. Technically, yeah, it's, it's clean, it's quiet, well-produced, it's got a ton of dynamics. The spectrum of sound and the spread of sound is really wide, but vinyl played on an equally high-end system. It, it has probably a little bit warmer sound, maybe not quite as accurate in some regards, but I don't know, I tend to lean towards vinyl because it's the way your ears work. It's analog. And it just, to me, it's a little bit more pleasing to the ears. Typically something that's recorded digitally is already beginning as zeros and ones. Um, so if you are gonna take those zeros and ones and put them on to an analog vinyl record, you, there's a lot of mastering and plating and, and certain things that need to be done to make it sound good. If you just take that CD and you transfer it over to vinyl without doing a proper vinyl master, all you get is digital mud, and it sounds terrible. They each have their own artifacts. Vinyl has clicks sometimes, pops, um, hiss, hum, buzz, uh, wow and flutter, warble. There's all kinds of inherent artifacting and problems in a lot of vinyl. That's also part of its character. And there's also some the best recordings in the world that were done on vinyl. So that's why I like to collect it, yeah. I can go through my record collection and I can remember parts of my life. Things, what I was doing when I bought that record, where I was in my life, um, the people I was hanging about with, you know, if I bought that record on vacation or if I, 
I, I bought it after I split up with a girlfriend or or something. There's there's always there's there's memories and you can dust them off with that 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 record when you pull it out and play it and that's for me that's the coolest thing about about collecting records. Um, my best friend passed away quite a while ago. He had a a small collection of records. It wasn't really that many. But uh, when he passed away, I ended up getting his collection of records, which I incorporated into my collection. And uh, it's like, I'll pull out a piece of that vinyl once in a while and put it on the turntable and play it, and it kind of takes me back to those days. It gives me the good memories, you know? I mean, I can hear it, if I hear it kicking down the street or something like that out of somebody's car or something, it's like, oh, that's cool. It's cool to hear it, but I'd rather listen to the vinyl that I, you know, that used to be his. It was like, wow, man, like that's, yeah, for sure. Because no two vinyl are the same, right? No two vinyl, even when they manufacture them, there's always a slight loss between vinyl to vinyl or a slight difference. Each has its own property, they each sound the same. Go to a record store. Don't buy your records on Kijiji. Don't buy them on Amazon. Come to record stores and talk to people like me. It can be a really unique community of people meeting uh, at shows, record shops, and just talking the, uh, the, the talk all around vinyl. There's all kinds of different facets to this hobby, and if you get out there and you're more social about it, it can be a more fun experience because you can share it with other people too, and they can point you in the direction or you end up trading records or just it's always fun to just talk about records.